When I first met Safari a few years ago, she had a wedged aluminium shoe along with a leather wedge pad that did not offer support over the frog area. This is what the feet looked like after the shoes were removed. Since then, Safari has been on a consistent schedule and been shod with the Versa Grip urethane rubber shoes made by Easy Care. So join me today for the whole process of shoeing Safari's right front foot using composite materials. I start up by cutting the clinches with a clinch cutter and then I use a crease nail puller to pull each nail out individually. I personally have found that removing each nail individually is the easiest way to remove the horseshoe. I start using the back of my knife to scrape out the old hoof packing which is magic cushion and arty mud specifically in the commissures and what this helps me do is to see how much depth the foot has. The commissure means common meeting place of two different tissues so in this case it's the frog that I'm trimming right now and the corresponding tissue which is the sole. Once the loose ends of the frog are trimmed off, I'll go ahead and now start trimming the bars. When it comes to trimming the sole, I start out by using the back of my knife to see what kind of tissue is flaky and wants to exfoliate off easily. And then I'll start using the sharp part of my knife to scrape off any loose tissue down to the waxy sole. The waxy sole is what we call live tissue and you want to be careful of not trimming down through the live sole. After I have finished using my knife to prepare the live sole, I can then use my nippers to rest against the live sole and do a nipper run and trim the excess hoof wall off. Once I have the foot flat and level, I'll go ahead and bring the hoof wall into a uniform wall thickness. Right now, the hoof wall is a little bit thicker through the toe region on both sides of the quarters, so I'm gathering it up so when I bring the foot forward, I know how much foot to bring in when I'm top dressing. Once I have the desired uniform wall thickness, I am then ready to get my shoe and fit it to the foot. When using a composite shoe, it is normally just a subtractive process when it comes to shaping the shoe. However, there are some tricks that require you adding material sometimes or shaping the clips. In this case, the back side of the clip does not fit the hoof wall nice and flush. So I'm going to bring the back side of the clips in so it meets the hoof wall evenly. This is what it looks like before and now after. 
I'll then go ahead and remove the mud guard. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be adding a plug. This acts kind of like a pad without adding any extra thickness to the shoe. You can attach the plug by super gluing it, heat welding it, or screwing it in. I have found that a leather wedge pad still works well for safari. Trim your shoe down to fit the foot, and then go ahead and fit the pad to the shoe. I'll mark where the clips are on the pad. This gives me a guideline to be able to notch out where the clips need to go. You can use your nippers, I-car snips, or a grinder to make this notch easily. Drill two holes where you want to secure the pad, countersink it, and then I use screws to attach the pad to the shoe. When it comes to shaping the shoe, I start off by removing all the sharp edges. We call this boxing and safing in the traditional shoeing world. I'll then soften the heel, which is what I'm doing right now. Once I've softened the heel, then I'll add breakover. For Safari, I continue the bevel just to the inside of where my nail heads would be placed on the shoe. I finish by blending the pad into the shoe to have a nice seamless finish and now it's ready to be nailed on. My choice of hoof packing today is field paste made by Red Horse. I make sure I get this seated well into the commissures and the central sulcus and then finish packing the hoof with a medicated sole pack. The type of nail I'm using today is made by Liberty. It's an LX50. The head of the nail is more of a square and seats well into the shoe. Every once in a while, I'll have a nail go in a little bit of an angle. So I take my crease nail pillars to square it up after I finish driving it into the shoe. All horseshoe nails have a slight bevel at the end of the nail. You want to make sure you have the bevel facing the right direction so when you're driving it, it comes out of the hoof wall. The hoof wall is an insensitive structure of the hoof. It does not contain blood vessels or nerves. This is why we're able to drive a nail into the hoof and it not hurt them. At the beginning of this video, I talked about cutting the clinches. So this is the beginning of creating a clinch. First, I seat the nails into the shoe and then bend the end of the nail over to about a 90 degree angle. Tap my clips in to meet the edge of the hoof wall. take my rag and file the top of the nails to have a uniform thickness. So remove the burr of the nail and the burr that's underneath the nail. This is done by using the corner of your rasp. Once you've done that you can use a tool that's called a clincher and it bends the nail down and back into the foot. This is what helps hold the shoe on is by bending the nail down, creating the clinch. File the sharp edges off, 
You can finish with a little sanding pad or hoof buffer. This is not always necessary, but it does leave a nice finish. I'm using a little bit of field paste as like a hoose conditioner to help do a little polish on the foot. Once again, not necessary, but it does look nice when you're done. So this particular horseshoeing package has worked well for Safari. We're using a Versa grip along with a wedge insert and the Versa grip plug to tie the whole package together. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking. I enjoy hearing from you guys, so please send me a comment of what you enjoyed about this video or what you'd like to see next. Cheerio.